back with the terrific twins. We're going to read you another story. Let's see what we have. We picked up for you Finding Dory. Dory was a little tank who lived with her parents. From a very young age, Dory had trouble remembering things. Hi, I'm Dory, she would say. Then she would explain that she had a short-term memory loss. Dory's mum and dad did everything they could to stop her from getting lost. But one day, Dory couldn't find her way back home. Dory just kept on swimming and swimming, getting further and further away from home. Time passed and Dory grew up, but she still asked every fish she met. She had seen her parents. None of them had. Hi, I've lost my family, Dory would say. Can you help me? Where did you see them last? The fish would ask. Well, a uh, funny story, but uh, I forgot. Poor Dory had forgotten where she came from. One day, while Dory was swimming along, she swam headfirst into a clam who was yelling something at his son. Nemo! They took him away, the clownfish cried. Kind-hearted Dory helped the clownfish, whose name was Marlin, searching for his missing son. One day later, long after Nemo was found, the three friends still lived together on the coral leaf. They had a happy and colourful home and had lots of fun together. But one day, Dory got swept away in a strong current caused by a group of migrating stingrays. Her world spun around her, spun around her, and then faded back to black. While she was knocked out, Dory muttered something under her breath. The jewel of Morro Bay, California. She woke up with a flood of memories in her head. She had remembered her parents and her home. She was from California. Dory had asked Marlin and Nima to travel across the ocean to with her to find her parents. They hitched a ride to California with their old friend Crushed Turtle. They soon arrived in Morro Bay, ready to start their search. But then Dory was scooped up by a human and carried away in a, in a boat. There was nothing Mullen and Nemo could do. A voice came in a loud speech in the distance. Welcome to Marine Life Institute, where, the, where we believe in rescue, rehabilitation and release. The next Thing Dory knew she had a tag clipped onto her fin and was dropped in a tank. Suddenly, an octopus appeared. He had one tentacle missing. He was a septopus. He up reached one of his long tentacles towards Dory. Name's Hank, he said. Hank, Hank explained that Dory was in quarantine and the tag on her fin was a transport tag, which means she was going to take him to an aquarium in Cleverland. Cle Cleveland? Oh, no, no, Dory? No, I can't go to Cleveland. I've got a, to get a jewel of Morrow Bay, California. That's this place, said Hank. Marine Life Institute, the jewel of Morrow Bay, California. You're here. Hank said he would help Dory search for her parents. She gave him her transport pack. He liked the idea of living in a nice, safe tank in Cleveland, and he didn't want to be sent back to the ocean. Dora agreed to the deal, so Hank, who, Hank scooped her up in a, into a coffee pot full of water and they set off. Dora and Hank found a map of the institute and tried to decide where to look. A member of the staff appeared and Hank hid, but Dory read the word on the staff's member bucket. It's a destiny. Suddenly Dora felt it was important that she had to get into that bucket. So she did. Hank followed her as fast as she could as Dory was carried away. Moments later, Dory was tipped into a large pool, which was home to a whale shark called Destiny. The two, the two got drunk, and Destiny realised she had known Dory when they were wrong. Dory had lived in the open ocean exhibit next door, and they used to talk to each other through the pipes. Destiny told Dory how to get to the ocean, o open ocean exhibit by swimming through the pipes, but Dory was afraid she'd get lost. Suddenly another memory flashed into Dory's mind. Her dad used to tell her there was also always there was always another way. Dory spotted some push chairs on the side of the of Destiny's pool. There, we're going to hijack on one of those. Hori jumped into a small jumped into a small cup of water on the tray of one of the push chairs, and Hank sneakily pushed her across the Marine Life Institute. They reached the open oak. Uh, open ocean exhibit and Dory Hank handed Hank her tag. He had done his part. They're actually down there, aren't they? Dory said, talking about her parents. I hope I can find them. 
knowing you, said Dank, and liking your chances. Now go get your family. With that, he gently dropped Dory into the water. Dory swam down through this clear, cool tank. At the bottom, she saw a trail of trails and follow it. She suddenly remembered seeing the same trail when she was a child. Dory gasped. This was her home. Her parents had made the shell pass to guide her with her back whenever she got lost. Just then, Dory noticed an entrance to a pipe. She remembered that her parents had wanted not to go near her as the strong current it caused him would carry her away. Young Dora had forgotten and been slapped into that pipe. It was my fault, Dory whispered. My parents, I lost them. Dory swam in circles, not sure what to do next. A friendly crowd spoke to her and explained that all the blue tanks had been taken to quarantine, ready to be shipped into the aquarium in Cleveland. Dory couldn't believe it. The only way back to quarantine was through the pipes where Dory normally swam in and was soon lost. Suddenly two shapes emerged from the darkness. Marlin and Nemo had found her. They had met a bird called Becky who carried them into a bucket into an institute for a search for Dory. Dory was thrilled. She explained everything and the three of them found the way together. When Marley, Nemo and Dory reached quarantine, the tank the, the blue tea the tank the tank of blue tanks was about to be loaded onto the truck of Cleveland. Luckily Hank was there, he lifted Dory and her friends into the coffee pot and put them into the tank. The other blue tanks recognised Dory, but they had sad news. Dory's parents had been sent to quarantine years ago and nobody knew what had happened to them. Dory was heartbroken. She drifted slowly into the waiting coffee pot as Hank scooped him up and out of the tank. Where's everyone else? asked Hank. Marlon and Nemo were still inside the tank. Just then somebody dragged Hank. The coffee pot fell to the floor and shattered. Dory spilled into a drain which took her back into the ocean. Once again she was alone. Dory swam through the water out into the bay, wondering what she should do. Something caught her eye. It was a shell trail. Dory likes shells, so she followed the trail. Suddenly two blue tangles appeared. Dory gasped. Her parents! Her parents! Dory's parents had been creating shell pathways all this time in the hope that Dory would see them and remember. It's you! It's really you! cried Dory as she burst into tears. Oh honey, you found us, said Dory's mum. And you know why you found us, because you remembered. You remembered in your own amazing Dory way. Dory was so happy that she hadn't forgotten her other family, Marlin and Nemo. She had to save them. With help from Destiny, who had leaped over the institute wall and into the ocean, and some other friends, Dory caught up with the with the truck that was carrying Marley and Nemo and forced it to stop on a bridge. Destiny used her tail to flip Dory up and then Hank, who had sneaked on board the truck earlier, helped her into the tank with her friends. Nemo was touched to see Dory. Dory, you came back! Dory smiled. Of course, I would never leave my family. Mama spooked, called for Beth and the bird to come and get them. Becky arrived but only scooped up Marley and Nemo. She left Dory behind. Marley and Nemo Marlon and Nemo and Dory's parents watched as the driver closed the truck's doors and drove away. Her and Hank were, Dory and Hank were trapped. The back of the truck, Hank slid through the vent of the roof and down into the windscreen. The truck driver pulled over and jumped out. Hank slid inside, locked the doors and started to drive. Hank, said Dory, I'm going to ask you to do something crazy. Dory's family watched in amazement as Hank drove the truck straight off the bridge and into the ocean. The doors flew open and all the fish went out into the sea. See, they were free. Dory returned to life on the roof. Her whole blue tank family and all her new friends joined her. She was happier than she'd ever been. But Marlin was nervous that Dory would get lost again and often followed her. One day, Marlin caught up with Dory and they bobbed in the water at the edge of the reef, grazing out into the blue. Wow, it's really quite a view, said Marlin. Yup, says Dory. Dory turned around to look towards her home and saw an even better sight. Her whole family together again. Unforgettable, she said. And there we go. We had finished it. Thank you, guys. I hope you liked the story. Please subscribe.